What's up, everybody? We are back with another barrel selection this week, and today we're doing some wild turkey and doing some Russell's Reserve. And happy St. Patrick's Day to Ryan, and welcome David Jennings. You all know David Jennings from Rare Bird One. Hey, the man. He should be picking this barrel. I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think y'all do a damn good job. I'm I'm sipping on two of y'all's right now, anyway. So. Very you know, nice. it was it was like uh, we had we had reached out to to Bruce to see if, if he wanted to join us. Uh, not to say that we're putting David at second fiddle here, but uh, Bruce Bruce ghosted us. He ghosted us of all things. So I'm, I'm going to remember you, Bruce. Remember this on this one. He left me on red. Like that's that's how bad it is. Um, but it's not a big deal. I understand busy guy. How, busy get, guy. I understand how busy people uh, things get with this. But you know, I, I invited David to come on because what better person that could lead us through either talking about all the Rick houses than David Jennings himself. He probably knows more than some of the Russells. So I think that's the well, best part. About I bet it. he does. know. I'm not going to say that, but uh, I try. I How bet you that? do. Uh, I, I guarantee you do. I, I'm right now. I'm a little bit jealous of what Ryan was holding up. Yeah. That's, what, that's what, one of those uh, old ones. My, my brother-in-law just gave it to me a couple weeks ago. Oh, and uh, oh, what? Sh show the crowd. Show the oh, crowd. Yep. Ryan. Sorry. I forget the people. Okay, does it have the embossed Jimmy Russell on the glass at the top or not? It, it doesn't does, look like yep. it does. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay, so the ones without that are usually pretty phenomenal. Uh, the ones with it, it could go either way. But uh, 2005 to early 2006 did not have the embossed glass, and they were filled uh, in Indiana, and they just uh, they have some – just some killer juice in them. It's like 12 year. Uh, it tastes like 12 year turkey, but it's 90 proof. But it tastes like the old one in one 12 year. It's it's killer. Yeah, stuff. this is uh yeah, it's 90 proof, and it definitely reminds me of those 12 year turkeys. It's it's really good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, I was I was happy with it for a free free gift. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like it's, it's a nice little dusty to pick up there. It is. It's got a little you know dusty funk to it, but mostly like. All the, you know, stuff you like about newer bourbon, more like, not astringency, but, you know, like, it's more sharp, you know, like the newer, mm -hmm. bourbon, whereas the Dusty is kind of more mellow. This has got packs some, you know, that typical turkey punch, which I like. Yep. Yep. Well, I actually started off drinking uh, some Irish whiskey. So <laughs> He's going way off profile. Yeah. Well, yep. I mean, you got to, it was funny. I, I was... I pulled this out and I was like, man, I've had this for a year now since we interviewed Alex uh, from from Slain Irish Whiskey. And I was like, I need to crack it open and drink it again. And it is, it's pretty damn good. I was like, I I miss, miss drinking some Irish whiskey. Now, of course, it's not as, as dark as we typically might get with uh, some bourbon. Was it 80 proof? Uh, it is well, it's triple cask. I forget what the, the whole it is 80 proof, but I forget what the whole like triple cask thing was that we had talked about. But you can go and check out our podcast with uh with slain and what about irish whiskey so cheers and happy pat, pat, pat st patty's day to, to everybody well happens. you know the rippies came from ireland so i'll just kind of chalk this up as kind mm. of <laughs> irish heritage whiskey how about that fair enough and that is like why it. you that is why we have you on because <laughs> you are gonna <laughs> yeah. so anybody that has like tough questions about wild turkey or want to know where the honey holes are just go ahead put it in the chat we're gonna put it up on here, and David is just gonna be your sounding board. He's just gonna answer all the tough questions for us. But oh, also, man. before I do that, I want to give a chance for David to also plug his uh, his masterpiece. So anybody that wants to go and and cop it, they can. Okay, so this is uh, American Spirit. This is my Wild Turkey book that a lot of you watching helped uh, me do because it, we you know, were pay, uh, Kickstarter supporters and Patreon supporters, and 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 I genuinely appreciate that. But you can uh, pick that up, go to wildturkeybook.com, and you can learn all about the history of the distillery, the history of the brand, um, what's going on right now. And uh, there's a, a big section about the different expressions from vintage pours to the modern lineup, and there's a lot there to take in. Uh, it's a fun little read, a lot of good photography in there from Victor Sizemore, uh, you know, just just that alone makes it worth picking up in my opinion. Cause yeah, cause Victor's Victor great. Did, man did a jam up job. So wildturkeybook.com and, and you can go to Amazon as well. And the Very next nice. iteration is going to have like pop outs from, 
Mm-hmm. Well, it'll at least be hardback because COVID scratch and step. I like that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, Christmas wrap. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll, I'll have another edition in a, in a year or two, and it'll be done up a little bit nicer, and of course, be caught up to date with wherever we're at at the time. But I've got another book in the works, which is uh, for the five year anniversary of my blog, uh, which is in uh, October of this year. And I'm going to just do a little special book where it's kind of like a greatest hits where I go back through the last five years and, and pull about 50,000 words out. I've, I've pretty much got it all compiled. I'm just going through and making what I'm calling like my director's cut. So each article will have, uh, you know, a paragraph or two or three or four, you know, describing the events surrounding the post or, you know, what was going on or where I wrote it. Like there was one I wrote in the auto repair shop and stuff like that. So all these little tidbits are going to go in there and uh, may even bring Victor back and get some photography on it if I can, you know, get the funds up to do that. So uh, you'll be hearing more about that uh, down the road. Very Just give cool. him like 5% of all book sales. I'm sure he'll be <laughs> more than excited to go and take some pictures for you. <laughs> yeah, he might take one or two then, but uh, I'm just kidding. I'm excited. I'm I meant will Gucci Corn make the book, you know, Gucci Corn and <laughs> Oh, uh, I probably need to do that, huh? In Miyagi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh man, those I'm telling you, I'm I'm sipping on these two now. And these are great picks. I I, I love how different they are. Uh, you know, I uh, kind of cheated on those. We had You a, did. Well, we had we had a Bruce and you know, Jimmy in there and he's like we went through them all. We're like these are good and they're like, "Well, let's pull out something." <laughs> and then he oh. pulled out some more stuff for us. So, well, uh, you know, you've got the one that's almost 11 years and then you've got the one that's almost nine years. But uh, a lot of folks, they just they only want the older stuff or whatever. But I mean, to me, well, eight years, that classic wild turkey, you know, that's, you know, one or one eight year for so many years. So eight's kind of the magic number for turkey. And, you know, if you if you if you tasted a bunch of turkey blind, you know, and didn't know what its age was, you'd probably pick out a lot of eight year stuff just yeah. uh, because of the profile. So um, I like how different these are and, and and I can talk more about them later, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably spoil my blog post because I'm going to play on the karate kid theme and all that, which I, I love, but it's uh, they're good. They're great picks. I uh, will take it. You just keep showering us with compliments and tell us <laughs> how great we're, we like girls. <laughs> y'all, got, y'all got bourbon to sip. We do. Yeah, we, yeah. Do. we do. We do. I'll kind of uh, give everybody a kind of like what's going on here. So, Thankfully, uh, and shout out to our retail partner, Keg and Bottle, on how all this is actually taking place. Uh, we were shipped six barrel samples of Russell's Reserve. So we'll we'll talk about the details of each one of them as we start going through here. But Ryan, this might be the easiest barrel selection ever. Because Usually the Russell's are pretty easy. <laughs> well, well they, actually, it, they're it, not. They're easier. hard because you got to. But at least we don't have to like only pick two. We can pick all six if we want. That is true. We don't have to eliminate a single one. So if if we're going to eliminate one, it's got to be a complete dud. And I, I don't know. Well, I think this will just be a fun conversation and we'll just kind of like sip and talk turkey the entire time and, and kind of let people know our thoughts like uh, as we start going through here. So Are you going to reveal uh, them as you go? You're going to reveal the Rick houses as you go or? Yeah, I, okay. I think that's probably the, the way to do it. So cool. I'll, I'll start actually pouring all of these in the in our glasses here and uh, shout out to Tony. I, at least I did a test turn on my my first one here, and I didn't have to go get a pair of pliers out to uh, open the bottle this time. But well, I think they so. were scared to turn mine. I had a couple of leakers. Ooh, did you? Yeah, that's okay. There's one. Oh. There's one uh, barrel number twenty one five fifty. I only got probably like a half ounce or less in there, so oh. I might have. You're in to, luck because uh, I got I got quite a bit. I don't think the camera's gonna. Oh, there you go. The camera just focused on it, but very nice. Yeah, I got actually the camera's not. I'm, I'm trying about, the whole like DSLR thing here, and it, it autofocus is, is slow on it. So it's funny. I hopped on Discord before here, and they were like, like taking bets. Are they going to pick all six? Or are they going to reject some? What are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've mm. got what two Rick houses, I think, in your lineup. Yep. Uh, I believe there's uh, Camp Nelson A and Camp Nelson F, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's Tyrone so, F. Or Tyrone F. The, yeah. yeah. Tyrone it's F. T-Y-R. All right. That's why it says yep. T-Y-R. So that's new because there, <laughs> there, have, <laughs> there have not been any Tyrone F. Russell's picks. But, I like so. this. You better call Tyrone. I love right. that song. <laughs> 
So that, I mean, that's cool. So this will be kind of, you know, the first year they've had it in, I mean, they've had it in, in uh, Kentucky spirits over the years, but you know, Russell's reserve single barrel has been around since 2013. And so Tyrone F, this is the first year you're going to find that. In, in a, What's the in story month. about a uh, Tyrone? Why is it the warehouse called Tyrone? Okay. Well, you have three camps. On Tyrone street, right? And that what it is. Something well, like it's, well, you have Tyrone, which is kind of like a little niche of Lawrenceburg. So it's kind of a little village there, you know, and, and that's, suburb. that's where the distillery is at. So that was named after Tyrone, Ireland, where the Rippies are from. So there's a little oh, St. Yeah. Patty's uh, tie in there. But uh, so Tyrone is on site. So Tyrone is the main campus. And then you have McBrayer, which is the three brick houses right across from Four Roses. And then you have uh, Camp Nelson in Jessamine County, uh, which there's five or six brick houses there. Um, so you've got some, you got some CNAs, which are Camp Nelson A. And then you have some Tyrone Fs, which are right there on site. Right on. Very well, cool. There we go. And that's why we have David on here, because he's the one that's going to school us. We would be like, ah. <laughs> like it's, it's, a suburb, it's, it's a suburb of Lebanon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. I'll tell you something cool while y'all are sipping and, and smelling and everything. Uh, okay. So uh, Bo Garrett, who's a tour guide there at Wild Turkey, y'all should be following him on Instagram and Twitter at Firebird Bo. But he just recently, both on Instagram and Twitter, uh, published uh, aerial photos of all of Wild Turkey's rickhouses and and labeled them. So if you're wondering, you know, really? where your rickhouse, you know, particular rickhouse of, of a bottle you might have, let's say you have a a uh, you know a CNF, you know, and you want to know where is Camp Nelson F, you can pull up one of his maps and it'll show you. The layout of Camp Nelson. Same goes for McBrayer and and uh, Tyrone. So um, check those out. If you follow him, you should be able to go back through his feed and find all of the, all of those maps. And I see a question about a favorite Rick House. Uh, you know, that's the crazy thing is that you know Turkey using these traditional wood Rick Houses. It it there's a lot of variance, and it, it it's not just each year. It's year over year. So you might taste uh, a barrel from Tyrone Rickhouse B and from 2017, and then you taste it again from 2020, and they're going to be different. And it could be because of the floor. It could be because of the distillation. Uh, so many factors in the seasons. Um, but G has always been a favorite of mine, uh, and B as well. Both of those are Tyrone. But, you know, it's hard to say. I don't like uh, Camp Nelson F because I do love it. And, and so it's hard to kind of say what a true favorite is. And I think as the years go by and we taste more and more barrels from more and more Rick houses, it'll be easier to kind of say that. But I think it'll start being a, a year thing. Like, well, what was my favorite in 2018 or what was my favorite in 2020? I, I don't know if necessarily it's going to be a, a favorite Rick house of all time. That's going to be tough. You're gonna be a good politician one day. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Took that party he's line voice for it. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, they're all, they're all great. They're just depends on you. Know, got the voice and the hair. No, I don't thank know. You. <laughs> so uh, the first one I have, and Ryan, I'm going in sequential order. I don't know if that's what you poured as well, but uh, I think so. Three thirty-one, so, three thirty-eight, four eighty-four, four seventy-four. Or hold on. Yeah, 474, 484. Hold on. There's no 460. Or it's 464. Or my label's all smushed because it got oh, okay. spilt on. What is no. it? You got you got 21 474, and that's a proof of 114.2 yep. uh Tyrone F. And then you've got 484, okay. which is Tyrone F 114.4. Mine looked like five, a six because it's all wet and blurred, but got that. 550 and 567. Perfect. Okay. So now so we're Ryan, on the same page. Yeah. So Ryan, your uh, your task tonight is to make sure that we get some sort of tasting notes or something to differentiate all these. So when people people are gonna have a hard time, this is like I said, it's gonna be the easiest barrel pick ever because we we can choose the lemonade or we can just take them all. But once these actually go on sale and people are like, well, I'm not gonna buy six barrels, am I? But maybe they will. So we got to figure out like which do they choose. So you've got to be. You got to be on your game with your tasting notes tonight. It, it's crazy. I'll do my best. You know, it was what three years ago, 
that I was on the podcast. I think it was 2018, around this time, Has March, when we recorded. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, or no, was it 2018? I can't remember. I think it was 2018. Pretty sure. Um, and uh, one of the questions came up about Russell's Reserve Single Barrel because I had written an article about top 10 reasons to sip Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. And that was uh, published in like tw- 2017. So I'm pretty sure it was early 2018. And uh, at that time, it really wasn't the, the popular whiskey that it is now. I mean, oh, nobody no. was like going and cleaning Russell's picks out. And now places can't keep them, you know, but for maybe an hour. It's pretty crazy um, how yeah, that's changed. Yeah. Yeah. When was our first one, Kenny? It was, we did with like Reed and Cork and Bottle. That was yeah. a great one. And uh, like, did. I remember we, we had, we got like, we did like eight of them and we got like three balls a piece and like, I couldn't get any of my friends excited about them. They're like, Oh, it's just Russell's reserve. You know, it's, that was like in 2016, 2017. And, and y'all picked that with Jimmy. So that's even <laughs> right. rarer. Cause who, who does a pick with Jimmy? Very few people have ever done a pick with Jimmy. So that's pretty cool. See, I didn't even know that was rare. <laughs> we just, I guess we just showed up and got lucky. You did. Yeah. I think Eddie had had like a schedule conflict or something. And so Jimmy's like, I'll take you. And I'll, that's, that's just <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And, you know, fast forward. I mean, don't be wrong. Like, uh, you know, you, you get a little bit older when you're older. And I'm sure it's not as easy to move around. So I guess yeah. we, we got lucky and got in when we got in. Mm-hmm. Um, David, I'll, I'll kind of pick your brain on this one. So, these are all going to be bottled at 110 proof, mm-hmm. correct? Just make That's sure right. I'm not. Yep. So these are all somewhere between 114 to 115 proof, uh, except one of them. Yeah, 115. Actually, never mind. 33, eight, 338 is actually 116.1. Okay. Um, I might actually go get, for the first time ever, I might go get like a pipette and an eyedropper and put some water in these things. Cause it's not, it's not a, a bad idea. I mean, I, I did that last year when I had the luxury of tasting at home. Um, I, I actually sat there and did the math. Of course I wasn't live on YouTube, so <laughs> I could, I could make people wait, but I was on discord and I was like, you know, I'm gonna proof these down. I used a proof calculator and, and I tasted them at 110, And so I tasted them at barrel proof. Cause I had a lot more than what y'all, you know, got an ounce yeah. and a half or so. Um, I had pints to work with. So, um, you know, I, I taste them at, at barrel proof at 110 and at 101. And I actually had one that I preferred at 101 and then ended up bottling it as a Kentucky spirit. And I was so thankful I did that because, and, and I was pretty much talked into it by my patrons, but I'm glad I did it because it turned out to be one of my favorite picks I've ever done. So, um, it just worked out that way. But, uh, yeah, 110 is where they're at. They don't do barrel proof picks right now, but I've heard that it's coming at some point in time, you know, the last couple of years they've been talking about it. Um, we will have Russell's 13 this year, which is barrel proof. So you're going to get a 13 year, uh, barrel proof. I don't think it's single barrel. I'd, I'd have to look at the label again. I'm pretty sure it's a batch, but you know, 13 year barrel proof Turkey is, uh, that's a cool thing. So um, Heck yeah. look out for that. I, and, and what I've been told is the availability will be a little less than rare breed rye. So if you had a hard time getting rare breed rye, you're going to have a little bit harder time getting Russell's 13, but go ahead and, and build those connections now with your local stores and, and reps. If you have the luxury of knowing your reps so that you're in line when that happens. Was the Russell's 13, is that another limited release? I guess I missed that one. It It's going to be like rare breed rye. So it's like, it's going to be like semi regular. They're going to do it every year, maybe twice a year, drop it. The bad thing is like rare breed rye is easy to make. I mean, it's four, six, and eight years. Um, so batching that up doesn't take a, you know, rare stocks or anything, but the 13 year, of course, is going to dig in a little bit there. So uh, yeah. it, it, it'll be out every year. It's just not going to see a whole bunch of it. I love the nose on 338. Oh, it, well, 331's already, it's, it's, it's not getting cut. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> <laughs> what what house is that? Here, aren't we? <laughs> so 331 yeah. is from? It's uh, Camp Nelson A44. It's 115 proof, 115.4. But I just get like this like sugary, like grape, like a jelly bean kind of thing going on. I don't know. It's fantastic. And you see the you batch know, with, date on, on that one as well? And the next one? 
It was it was distilled? Huh, 12, 12, 12. 12, That's 12, wild. 12. So there you go. I can't do math, but somebody can do the math. That's pretty cool. 12, you get a triple 12 there. Yeah. Could be a sticker. Like a, uh, what was I going to say? A slot so machine. be eight. Oh, and, there you uh, go. Eight and a half. Is that right? Mm, sure. <laughs> and, like and I'm not gonna act, I'm not gonna act like I know math, so <laughs> yeah, and then you know who knows when it's gonna get bottled. I mean, they've it's not like they're pumping these things out, you know, the day after. So dude, it takes forever to get our Russell's oh, bottle out. I, I mean, mean the, even the, do them. Yeah, I mean the the ones we did, the the Cobra Kai and the Miyagi dough, I mean, we did those what a year ago? Like yeah. and they I mean it, it took it took probably ten months, is probably how long it took. So. Well, look at it the, on the bright side. You get a little more age on it, so um, yeah. that that typically never hurts. You know, I, I mean, if you had some mature whiskey and it was still sitting there, you might get a little bit nervous. But I think you're safe if it's eight years to let it sit a little bit longer. It's not like it's going to start going the other direction. Yep, and the other ones are twelve twenty seven twelve. So you got a, a difference of thirteen or sorry, fifteen days there. I think another thing worthy of, of noting is that, so these were distilled at the new distillery um, starting last year with the exception of those 10 uh, year CNFs like uh, Miyagi-Do, uh, all of the, their barrel selections were uh, whiskey that were, was distilled at the old, I mean, at the new distillery, everything prior to that from 2019 back was all uh, distilled at the old distillery, the old Rippy distillery. Um, so yeah, it just, it, it doesn't mean anything, you know, maybe, maybe not. Some people say that, uh, you know, they don't like the direction of the new single barrels. I, I have to disagree because man, I disagree on the first. Yeah. Two. The, <laughs> yeah the, 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 the bat, just think about the batch stuff. Think about one Oh one and rare breed and the, the quality of, of that right now, like rare breeds just kicking ass right now. And that's six year whiskey, eight year whiskey and, and 12 year whiskey. And, you know, I guarantee a bulk of it's around that eight year range and that's going to put it in the new distillery. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if folks think that the new distillery is not going to make whiskey that competes with the old one, I, I think they're wrong. And 338 is special too. It's good. Yeah, I was going to say 338 is pretty good. That was, <laughs> it's I, like if you could, instead of like mango habanero, it'd be like apricot habanero sauce. It's like got apricot with like that real spicy kick on it mm -hmm. it's like a great like wing sauce i don't know it's <laughs> yummy <laughs> like asian zing huh? yeah exactly you got you got a favorite bw3 both, both of these are way better than the old russell's i was drinking before this <laughs> <laughs> how about that yeah so maybe you know when you tell as jimmy and eddie you're like why is old turkey better than new turkey? They're like, no, it's not. It's it's just different. I mean, <laughs> no, it's just I know. a li and they'll say nothing's changed, and and to agree to to a degree, nothing has changed. Um, the analogy I like to give is if you take a chef and you put him in one kitchen and ask him to grill you a steak or whatever, he's gonna do it. You take him and put him in a different kitchen and tell him to do the same thing. It's not like he's gonna make two horrible steaks you know he's just in a different kitchen with different you know yeah. utensils different stove different meat whatever and that's the way they view it it's like the, they haven't changed what they do it's just the the facilities are, are different man i was like i'm gonna go back to the first two just to verify our our thoughts on it only because i want to add just a a little drop of water or two just to See if we what are you, get... you doing? Like a milliliter, or just a drop. Oh, dude, I'm just I'm. I have no idea how to get five proof <laughs> points down in like uh, in a, a thimble quarter, <laughs> and a quarter ounce of whiskey. So I'm just doing a few drops, and then I'll uh, give a few swirls here. Yeah, I think two just, drops would be, be fine. Yeah, yeah. Just, My turkey baster. To... Somebody said a turkey baster. It's not that big, <laughs> but it's kind of big. It's. It was uh, so it kind of gives inside scoop of like where we got these. So, I mean, we just got them off of Amazon. We were doing some blending for the original United batch. And the problem is, is like you just can't order 10. Like, kind yeah, of, how's the rye them? batching going? I see that y'all are working on that. Yeah, we got one uh, we think's a winner. So, um, yeah, we're excited. We're going to get uh, so 
we're working with Sagamore and Barstown Bourbon Company on that, and we're cool. Going to send it off to them to get their blessing to make sure it's a representation of what they like, you know, and us too. So I think they will, but uh, yeah, we're happy about it with it. And uh, if you haven't had, well, I, you probably haven't, but not a lot of people have had Sagamore's own distillate. They're, I haven't. So no, it's just the MGP stuff. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, you know, truthfully, you know, Pursuit United was was a shocker for me because. You know, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going in kind of like, you know, I'm expecting, you know, it'll be pretty good. It'll be kind of, you know, the best of what you can do with what you got or whatever, you know? And, and, uh, and I was like, well, damn, okay, well, we're, we're playing with the big leagues now, aren't we? And, uh, (laughs) that was just nosing it. Then I tasted, I'm like, damn, okay. I like this. And I like that it was, uh, it was familiar, but it was different. So I like that, you know, you want something that kind of, you want to have your own signature, uh, like, uh, yeah, if you're a guitar player, you kind of want your own sound, but then you don't want to be so out there that no one recognizes uh, the melody. So it was nice to have that kind of, you know, you have a signature profile, but it's not like it's so far off. It's not bourbon, you know? Sure. No, Thanks. I, I thank you. I appreciate that. It. Yeah. It, we were, we worked hard on it and happy with how it turned out. So we're, we're excited about it. Just trying to recreate more of it. That's the hard part. <laughs> is, yeah. Is uh, when you're at the mercy of, sourcing contract distillation all that fun stuff but so is that the goal is that the goal to make united like you're going to try to match the profile and keep that or or is it going to be one-off blends every time nope we want to keep it the same good luck as possible (laughs) yeah well as possible Uh, now now you're going to really see where you know the big boys like really deserve some kudos oh totally like blending is uh i didn't i didn't realize how hard it was till we (laughs) you know, got into it Mm -hmm. because a little of something can throw it off way off, you know, just a sure, you know, a few milliliters of this or that, uh, it's, it's wild, but it's funny with the pipettes. So I had like hundred ML beakers and I was like trying to pour them in and like get them because I was like, God damn, you know, and I'd have to pour it back out and then report and King's like, why don't you just get pipettes? I was like, duh. Oh. <laughs> so we ordered some on Amazon and like got a thousand of them. So yeah. this, this is going to make for a, a good easier. story when y'all are like in that glass tower up in like Chicago somewhere. Yeah. Like, remember when we ordered those pipettes from Amazon? <laughs> we'll still be in Kenny's basement, probably. <laughs> we got we got a long time until whiskey comes of age here. So yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what. The first two Camp Nelson A's, man, those are. Those are solid. Those aren't going anywhere. So go ahead and add those to the, the old pursuit list here. You talking about 331, 338? Yep. Yeah, totally. Those are two home runs. Now I'm wishing we would have pulled the rest of the Camp Nelson A's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's give Tyrone his due or, we'll, yeah, or we'll the get, town, we'll whatever. The, the suburb yeah. of Tyrone. <laughs> They are they are a little different though. I mean, I'd say I'd say at least on four seventy four, it's a little a little more like uh, closer on the tannins, if you will. Hmm. I didn't know Lawrenceburg had sprawl. You know, <laughs> they... And and well, I think that you know, I think Tyrone came before the you know Lawrenceburg was incorporated. I believe I'd have to go back and look again at my notes, but you know, Tyrone, we're talking early. We're talking like mid eighteen hundreds. So uh, it's been there a while. I think it just got enveloped, you know, in in Lawrence, by Lawrenceburg at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this first Tyrone's got a little more tannins, a little bit more kind of smokiness to it, or something. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah, like a lot more barrel char influence. This is on the Tyrone. What floor is it? F four. Okay, so, floor so you're four, in the mid there. Hmm, okay, yeah. they're all fours. So. Yeah, I'm not no sure mystery. how many how many floors Tyrone F has. I, I'm assuming uh, six. Yeah, so where the first the two Camp Nelsons were like really dried fruit, floral, you know, kind of spicy, peppery notes. But these are more like cinnamon, honey, with mm-hmm. some charcoal like kind of things going on. A note that mm-hmm. I get they're good though. I mean, on, on Camp Nelson A, at least. 2019, 2018, 2019 Camp Nelson A, uh, which were some of those were fourth floor. 
Um, I got a lot of candy apple. Like I would, I was always yeah, like getting that. candy apple on Camp Nelson. A. That's kind of the C A kind of helped me remember candy <laughs> apple. Seeing it, but that was like always a note I pulled out of those. It was like that that crisp, not caramel apple, but more candy apple. But you know whether that's there in the twenty twenty one C N A, I can't tell you. But um, that was something that always stuck out to me. Yeah, it's just a lot of bright like fruit kind of yeah. flavors, which mm-hmm. are, could be apple or crisp pears yeah. or. There you go. Just don't say anything. stone fruit. Just don't say stone fruit. Yeah, I still have yet to have a stone fruit. To <laughs> I've know never used that as a tasting note, I don't think. Uh. It's always a weird one. People are like, oh, it's like stone fruit. And you're like, the fuck is a stone fruit? <laughs> and you got to go Google it. And you're like, oh, it's like six different kinds of fruit that you already know and love. Yeah, I tend to go either specific with the actual fruit or I will say white fruit. Sometimes, and that means like kind of pears, apples, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or, or, or I might say, uh, you know, red fruits, which I'm thinking berries and, you know, strawberries, like cranberries, that kind of stuff. All right. Moving on to 484. Big fan of a four, big fan of 484. Yeah. It's got a lot of brown sugar, like mm-hmm. on. Tons of brown like sugar, a, buttery kind of notes. Uh, that was like a like a Dutch apple pie. Is kind of what I was going for. Yeah, that's probably perfect. With a little bit of peppery sprinkled in the Dutch apple pie. <laughs> mm-hmm. For sure. Are y'all so, getting yeah. any any um what I call prickle or the Camp Nelson prickle? So like in a lot of the Camp Nelson picks, it tends to have this kind of. It's like a ginger beer kind of thing going on. Uh, usually you find it more in the uh, taste and the finish, you know, back into the palate kind of thing. Um, that was a real signature thing in, in 18 and 19. I didn't know if that's popping out with any of the ones that you're tasting tonight. but Yeah, well. definitely got that spicy ginger, like ginger beer kind of, mm-hmm. you know, like a, not a ginger ale, but, you know, a real strong ginger beer. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Tyrone F, I have not had any... You know, I've had some F Kentucky spirits from the 2000s, but that could be Camp Nelson F because they had those those Rick houses from the 90s. So, you know, it's hard to say they just put F on there. And, you know, isn't that the thing with with Russell's picks? It's uh, it's a good thing to have groups like this that make sure to get the correct information on the label, because just seeing a on a Russell's label or a Kentucky spirit, that could mean three different A's that could mean Tyrone mm-hmm. A, McBrayer A or Camp Nelson A. So you need to kind of be on top of that and make sure the rep understands that when you get it labeled, if not, everybody's just going to be asking. So. Isn't that funny? Like the reps are like, I don't care. Just they really don't. The like, no, please care. Does. They're like, some of them do. It. I will say that, that we have a great one in South Carolina. I can't speak for everyone, but some of them do care. Yeah. That's, that's always a thing. It's funny, like for anybody that's kind of like listening right now, and, and I know David and myself, like and, and Ryan as well. When we start talking to brand reps and we start talking to people that are just just the salespeople, the the field people, like we know probably like fifty percent more about their own product than they do. And it's it's funny because you're going through and you're like, oh, can I get some of this? What about this? And you're like, you know, like when we talk to like Brown Foreman rep, you're like, hey, I know that Jack Daniels. Uh, you know, rye single barrels are coming out. Make sure you put us in the list and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, where'd you hear that? What, where'd you find that? It's like, it's like, you, you act like it's a secret. So. <laughs> yeah. It's just like going into a total wine and the, and the guy approaches you and he's like, I've got something for you to try some flat, you boat. know, and you're just like, this is not like I had one guy, like, I mean, nice guy. I'm not trying to knock, knock anybody, but he, he pulled out chestnut farms and he's like, dude, you've got to try this, man. This is, this is like George T. Stag, man. And, <laughs> and he like basically forced me to taste it. And I'm just like, it's not. <laughs> it's not George T. Stag. And you're like, thanks, no. man. Appreciate that. Just I was at last time I was piece total one. They were, I can't, what's their house brand that's Barton? They've got two stars. Like two stars, they got, yeah. They got a few not two star, the, it's like a horse or something. Uh, Chestnut Farms oh, is um, the... Yeah, they've got a, they got a few of them now. Uh, they're 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 really starting to branch. But anyways, out. they were, he was selling on Just some. Be guy careful what you're like, saying. Remember, Total's a sponsor. Oh no no no! <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Sorry, no, I was it, I was talking about the dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was the guy. He was talking how like, you know, Sazerac made this, this product, and he's like, yeah, it's just like you know, Wellers and Stags and all this. It's the same exact stuff. And I was like, 
oh yeah, it's a good line, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I mean, it does say that. I I know that I've because what was it? I think. Gosh, I think I sent you the text message. Um, I'd have to go and, and scroll back. And I was looking, I was like, oh, well, that's where all those Pappy 23 foils went. Oh, yeah. Uh, because yeah, they are, they're using like the, the same exact Pappy uh, cognac bottle with the Pappy 23 foils on like their house brand that's like $22 a bottle. And, and don't be wrong. Like it's, it's okay. It's a house brand. Yes, they have a deal with Sazerac. And, you know, do what you will to try and, and sell some bottles and say it comes from Sazerac, which we all know it probably comes from Barton. But it just kind of goes back to the thing of like, if you're trying to stop fraud from happening and you want something to kind of be only for that particular brand, like uh, it, you can't pull the wool over people like us that, you know, we, we see that and we automatically know like those are the foils that belong to Van Winkle. So. I wonder if it'll eventually turn into like stuff like McAllen where, you know, they have the the hologram sticker, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you know, I wonder if it's eventually going to go that way. I just don't think they care enough. Um, and, and it's, I think it's a volume thing too. Like, like some of the McAllen's like, I'm sure it's not as big as releases Van Winkle is every year. You know, right. it's, you're, you're looking at a, I mean, what, some of those McAllen's you're looking at what, 30, 38 years. Like those are, it's pretty rare stuff. Now, when you think of in regards to like Pappy 23 and Pappy 20, yeah, it's considered rare, but there is a heck of a lot of stuff that goes out across the nation every single year. True. Um, you know, when True. we were even looking at projections for United and stuff like that, and Ryan and I were talking and, you know, we're like looking at like, Oh, like 40,000, 80,000, 90,000 bottles. We're like, Oh gosh, that sounds like a lot. And I was thinking about, it, I was like, you know, you see George T stag, or should I say George T stag every year is like 40,000 bottle release and you never see a bottle. That's so true. I, yeah. I don't think, I don't think 90,000 is like a bad number to even aim for here. So yeah, it, isn't that crazy? Cause you know, now that starts making sense why, you know, releases like wild turkeys masters keep, you know, the bottled and bond, you know, was like people couldn't find it this year. And the only reason they probably could find these masters keep releases in the past several years is because wild turkey just hasn't been very popular because the bottle and bomb was like 14,000, I think bottles in the grand scheme of things. That's not a lot of bottles to go around. And, uh, I think people were just used to the fact that, you know, wild turkey had shelf turd syndrome for a long time. And we just <laughs> sat there, you know? And, uh, I mean, I, re I remember people passing on 98, like, uh, 250 is too much, you know, for Turkey. And now, boy, that was a good, good one. Yeah. So, you know, it's 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 come around finally, but uh, it's going to be hard to meet the demand the more popular it gets. And uh, there's a good example right there with, with Stag. Yeah, well, call me one of those people that was like, yeah, I'm not paying 250 for it. And now I'm like, damn it. But <laughs> when the 2002 came out, I'm like, I'm not going to miss this one. So. <laughs> yeah. Did the same thing. Well, I, I well actually ninety eight didn't. I didn't even see ninety eight, but uh, I had an opportunity otherwise, you know. But it, it was still too much at the time, and and uh, yeah. but uh, I wish you know I jumped on that and and, and reached out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I did get two thousand two and two thousand three. Good deal, Ryan. What barrel number are you on? I'm on five fifty. Man, and I love it. I was about to say. I, I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I wrote it's, Oak Bomb. Like it's it yeah. is good. I, there's it's something about these, these Tyrones and like, just, I don't know. It's there's a lot of oak in these Tyrone F. Is that what's yeah. going on here? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I like oak. You get a lot of like bourbon wheel flare, like the caramel, vanilla, brown sugar, cinnamon, but it turns into like this nice smoky oakness at the end on nice. all these, which is nice. It's an, different from the Camp Nelson's, you know, like which we talked about were those kind of brighter fruity notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'm I'm looking forward to trying some. Which, by the way, I mean, I'll just I just want to say thanks to you guys for for the connections there with with keg and bottle and, and having an opportunity to to taste some of these myself in the next day or two. So really appreciate that. Absolutely, no, we're we're happy to. It was funny when this all came down. You know, it was like, oh, uh, ten barrels are coming there <laughs> for keg and bottle. I was like, "Ooh, what does that mean?" <laughs> and, yeah, that's uh, and uh, and so I was just like, "I was like, well, we're not going to take all 10, but I was like, we, we'll take it. We'll take at least half of them, right?" <laughs> so, that was awesome. I, I mean, yeah. I, I I really appreciate it because I'm going to have fun. Hopefully tomorrow night, and if not, then the next night. We, you know, we got bad weather coming through, so who knows what UPS is going to do tomorrow? But hopefully, mm. 
I mean, it might be a tornado outside and I'm going to be like tasting whiskey. (laughs) Right. Get the candles. I've I've got something to do. (laughs) Yeah. It's important to be in the cellar doing a barrel pick (laughs) with candles. (laughs) With Helen Hunt. Priorities, priorities, you know. (laughs) With Helen Hunt. Yeah, everybody's putting the in the chat. Yeah, dude, these these Tyrone Fs, these are these are all oak. I mean, it's it's a lot of a lot of oak going on with with all these. So it, it is yeah, it is a, a lot of contrast, barrel, a lot of barrel notes on these, which is good. Oh, here's a good question for you. Yeah, it, I have no idea about this. Yeah, it, it's all uh, that same old uh, cooperage. I'm pretty sure they're working with Independent Stave, and and then they use the number four char. It's across the board for the rye and their bourbon. They don't they don't adjust that. Now there's an exception here. Uh, you know you've got Masters Keep One coming out this year, which is going to be it's going to have a secondary maturation. So it's going to be a toasted oak. Um, you know secondary maturation there. Give me your thoughts on it. They're jumping I want to know. Toasted bandwagon. I, I want to know. Okay. Like, what? Why so, is everybody jumping on toasted? Like everybody. Literally, there's nobody that's not doing a toasted anymore. I, I don't well, get it. Well, you know, Eddie did a, a, a webinar uh, a couple weeks ago. He didn't get into a lot of details about it, but he wanted to make it very clear that he would not put his name on something gimmicky or just something to do it to do it. Um, you know, he went into this project. Uh, he worked with Independent Stave uh, on these different toasted finishes. It sounds like they tasted through a bunch of samples of how the whiskey might evolve with these different levels of, of char. And I assume it's a char toast because, you know, it's got that straight, you know, uh, designation, which is just a very light char to toast it, um, not baked. But uh, it sounds like it's something he's very proud of. Uh, but what it is, and, and Bruce went into greater detail, uh, I, I believe, a couple weeks later. But it was like basically, uh, you know, it's it's like Jimmy's profile and Eddie's profiles, their their you know preferred profiles blended together and then finished or married together in this toasted barrel. So, uh, you know, how that, you know, I don't have all the details. They didn't really go into that age wise and and that type of stuff, or, you know, certain things were involved. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open-minded with it. I I think there's a lot of people that poo pooed on it right away when they saw the TTB filing, they're like, what toasted screw that, you know, Turkey's just jumped the shark and this kind of stuff. And I'm like, no, I mean, it's not like this thing they decided yesterday, like, ooh, Elijah Craig toasted. We're going to do it, too. It's like this was probably planned two years ago or so. You know, it's like not so oh, like yeah. these things just well, we're going to copycat. You know, I mean, Mick Mickers has been doing it for a while, but um, and there's probably some others out there. But, you know, I'm open minded to it. Who knows? And we don't like I said, we don't know the ages. We don't know what you know, we, it, who knows what it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it'll be interesting. I just hate it's... to ruin any of this whiskey with toasting it. It's so good as is. <laughs> Not ruining it, but you know what I mean. Like, well, like you know, I think there's a, there's there's a difference that you can actually probably take some of the younger stuff and and sure. put it in a toasted barrel, and then all of a sudden it tastes like an extra maybe one to three years older than it actually does. And I think that's just what you do, what you get kind of with rebarreling anyway. Is 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 if you get through that process. Um, yeah, it hides flaws for sure. It does. It does. Well, you, you think about this too, and and I'd mentioned this in a blog post when that I'd done uh, called "One Can Assume" or something like that a few weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> it was addressing these concerns. Take for example, Knob Creek Quarter Oak. You know, Knob Creek Quarter Oak only a small amount went into a quarter oak barrel. It, the rest was just standard Knob Creek. It even tells you on the verbiage on the label. It's like. We took our standard Knob Creek and blended it with a small amount of quarter oak. And it's like, so maybe not even a quarter. Yeah. yeah. You, so, <laughs> so this this toasted thing, it could just be some of it. We don't know. You know, it could be blended back with, with standard turkey. We, there's no idea. We have no idea what, what it is. So until we do, you know. Yeah. It well, let's not poo poo on it until we try it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I was going to poo poo on it. No, I'm no, just I'm just saying the public. I, I just look at it as general. yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I just look at it as as like, like the trend. Like there is nobody that's not doing. I mean, Ryan, all it means is that we have to do a toasted United at some point. <laughs> that's all. But that's all it really means at that right now. I can't afford the extra barrel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of of uh, this barrel, five sixty seven. You on that one yet? The last one, yes. And my yes. gosh, it might be my favorite. 
Ooh. It's <laughs> dry. Well, drop I'm the, not distracting you from your, your tasting here. I don't know about. No, no, this is this is good. It's all. I would get, say blend. I think everything. it's my favorite out of the Tyrones. I mean, it is just a solid Kentucky bourbon. Like mm-hmm. it's so rich. Like if you like, like brown sugar, just like desserts. I mean, this is like hitting all those like rich, sweet dessert flavor profiles for me. Are you, here's, here's a question I have for you. A trend that was kind of recognized last year was there was a lot of nuttiness in. Yes. Okay. Is there any nuttiness in these? And which ones are you finding that in? Roasted chestnuts. Okay. Yeah. So I'm getting a lot of smoke notes from you. Smoke. Yeah. There's definitely, definitely a lot of smoky, like, I shouldn't say toasted because we just talked about toasted barrels, but you know, toasted kind yeah. of notes. Like that's why yeah, you those, roasted. Those, if you go you know, roasted, roasted peanuts, you get it, you know, New York or whatever. And and that's what I in in a lot of the 2020 picks, I was getting like payday candy bars and and honey roasted peanuts and you know roasted almonds, this type of thing. And so I was just curious if that was you know yeah, it's got like a honey toasted almond or not almonds, but peanuts you know the okay. planters i love those things you can just like smoke a few uh handfuls in no time and then you're like damn that's 500 calories for all <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing when that you just can't you know you, you can't stop you know it's like oh you know. god yeah, yeah you're like oh i'm eating healthy with almonds and peanuts and then you look down and you're like <laughs> shit there's 200 calories for like five of these <laughs> Where was it? Uncle Shim wants to know. It's uh, barrel five sixty seven. If I can get the damn camera oh, thing, yeah, five sixty sevens. Ooh, that's good. And that's good stuff right there. All right, all right. So it sounds like you got one at least right there. Uh, I think we got a few. <laughs> good, good yeah, deal. I mean, I, like I said, this might be the easiest barrel pick ever, only because we only get to choose what we don't want. Yeah, I, I think that. Um, I don't think we've ever done a peril pick like that before. It's usually yeah. like, oh, you've got six of them here. You can only choose two. Yeah. yeah I, so there, there's only one that is kind of not like, I'm not excited about it. It's just kind let's of see if we're on the same page. Is it a, uh, is it four, seven, four? It is. Yes. Yeah. yeah and it, I'm, not that it's bad. It's just, there's nothing unique about it. It's just middle of the road. It's Yeah. Whereas the other ones are just so rich and robust in flavors, it's just kind of mellow. Um, a lot of common bourbon notes, but not like they're not elevated like the rest of them. So I actually wrote on four seven four. I said usually pass. I mean, like if we were in a an actual barrel pick scenario with Eddie or something, I'd be like, okay, pass on this one. Let's go to the next one. So that's that's kind of what I was thinking too. I honestly, I, I'm not too excited about four seven four either. I just it reminds me of, uh, oh, let me take one more sip and see if I can make sure I'm not mistaken about it, but it's oak some, water. Yeah, Just it's oak got water. like a bitterness on the end, too. There's mm-hmm. a comment here from uh, a Jay Evans, I'm, I'm yeah, assuming that's Tabor, Tabor, uh, about uh, drinking 2001 Russell's 101. I mean, come on. Any dusty bourbon from any distillery. I mean, you know. It's like, you know, are you going to drink a 2001 Weller? You know, it's like, it. so I'm not, <laughs> uh, here. No, I'm not, gross. I'm not, yeah. it's not personal, but I'm just saying that, you know, modern whiskey is different than, than dusty whiskey. And uh, yeah, I could say that for a lot of other old granddad, whatever, you know? Right. So yeah, I think that's kind of, I hate to say it's not relative, but it pretty much is not relative. It is not relative. Yes. I'm with you, David. Cause you just can't replicate. No, the oxygen and different storage levels and this and that, like, yeah, and that newer... two thousand one Russell's probably was in Cypress tanks and and uh, old, you know, definitely the old barrel entry proof and there's just a lot of factors. You it's know, it's not and... apples to apples. Yeah, exactly. Uh, again, do want to say shout out. Well, thank you to Tony for making all this actually happen. But then again, thank you to Ian and Tony from Campari definitely. for Cheers. sending sending yes. all these samples and kind of going to bat for keg and bottle and getting a bunch of barrel selection samples for for a store so always thankful to have 
great connections out there in Southern California that, that make all this happen. So thank you again. And, you know, this is, this is honestly, this is great to, to be able to have a conversation with you, David, as well, to, to be able to go through all these as much as it is to have fun with, you know, Eddie and, and Bruce in the warehouse and, and kind of, I think well, it, thank we, you. we would also, we, yeah, we'd also do ourselves a disservice if we didn't mention what it is like to do a, a barrel selection at wild Turkey uh, for those that have never done it, you know, I think it, it ranks up there as one of our favorite places to go. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Only for sure. Only because it is a, it's a great experience because it's one of those things where it's like, if, if you don't find what you like, you just go to the next one. Uh, yeah. You can end up, you can end up Keep tasting. Going. Yeah. You can end up tasting 10 to 20 barrels that day. Easily. Uh, Easily. Yeah. And, and I think that's the, the coolest part about it. Um, Eddie's made fun of me for being a wuss plenty of times because, <laughs> you know, he, he does it old school. You know, he's got the, the bung hammer there yeah. and, you know, he's, you know, got the, the old the, notebook, the leather, the leather folder notebook. Oh yeah. He, mm -hmm. he has the ledger. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's no, hilarious. no, no electronics, you know, it's like, he's got it old school. Uh, it, it, one thing that, and I've, I've said this on other podcasts and stuff before, but you know, the coolest thing to me is I had this moment, you know, where I'm sitting there thinking, you know, this Rick house was built in 1894 and I'm sitting here smelling, you know, fumes of, of what's been cooking into this, this bracing and stuff for like, you know, a hundred plus years. So it's like, you're, you're literally standing and smelling bourbon history. You know, think of all of the angel share that's just gone into all of those pegs and braces and stuff over the years. And it, it's, it's pretty, it'll kind of take you for a second and you're just like, wow, this is so cool. You don't, you know, there's a lot of y'all done so many more picks and, and so many different places, but to be in history like that, like living sensual history with it, it's, it, it's, you're seeing it, you're smelling it, you're tasting it pretty damn cool. Yeah. It's a beautiful property. You got that bridge mm -hmm. that goes over the Kentucky river. I mean, and it's, it's so like, untouched. It's not really manicured or fancy. Yeah. Or, it's just like, this is just the real shit, you know? And it, it's, it's pretty cool. It I'll is. tell you how real it is. It's so real that when you try to record a podcast there, there's <laughs> oh not a single outlet around. <laughs> and I think we had to run like, God, like 120 feet worth of extension cords to like try and, oh, uh, it was, it was a mess that day. So anybody that's ever wondering, it's like back in, I don't know, episode 100 something where it was us and Reed and Emerald and Ed Bly from Cork and Bottle and Jimmy Russell. And it was the, it was, it was the day that I said, I will never record a podcast ever again on a barrel pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it was, it was quite the, um, we were like, we we're like marionettes walking around with wires <laughs> everywhere. People <laughs> like just, Next Tripping time you're gonna over. have a Honda generator or something out there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah something there, like there that. There wasn't an outlet anywhere. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're Never. Like, we know there's electricity in here. There's a light on. <laughs> it's it's got to be somewhere to plug this thing in. Yeah, they they want to they limit the amount of electricity and just running running water to make sure it suppresses any fire and stuff like that. Um, and you know, when you go through it, I mean, as David kind of mentioned, it, it's really a lot of stuff that hasn't been touched in a long time. And it really is a, a, a living piece of history because it's also kind of grandfathered into um, a lot of the clauses now that, you know, when you start building warehouses, like I know right. probably knows better than me, like they can't be within like, I don't know, like at least two or three football fields from one another because of the, the Heaven Hill distillery right. fire did. Yeah. Um, yeah when you go to Wild Turkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you, when you go to those warehouses, like they are like, I mean, you could, yeah, you could, you could almost spit. stretch out between B and A. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's pretty that's crazy. Rare. It's cool. Um, you know, like I said, living history, uh, but y'all that, that, that's a good podcast. It's on YouTube. If anybody's watching, um, Y'all had a, a grand slam team that day too. I mean, so you had Jimmy, of course, with you, but then you had seventeen eighty nine B. So you had Reed and Emerald there and and Ed Bly. I mean, you just you really these are a lot of folks now just don't understand uh, these old bourbon groups that have been around forever and, and uh, the quality picks that they were they were cranking out uh, at a time when people weren't really interested in picks at all. Yeah, um, I was starstruck that day. That was like that was my first ever pick pick at uh, Wild Turkey. And it was, I don't know how we got invited to it. To be honest, I don't either. We showed them. We're like, <laughs> we're, we're the peasants with the mics. We're here for the pick. Well, uh, I've, I've talked to Reed many times. He's a great guy. Oh, and Reed is, is super, 
And that six year Willet that they picked that was like the uh the crazy one that was like that fetched like six grand or something. It's so good. But I mean, you know, I don't know if I'd pay that much, but you know, it's amazing some of the the barrels that they've they've selected over the years. Yeah, they've, yeah, they've I haven't heard from Reed in a while. Oh, you yeah. gotta you gotta be friends with him on Facebook, man. He's he's uh he's always cranking out new recipes every week and and cooking and stuff like that. So and I know, we were in DC you. one time and he was like, Come on over, I'll cook you a meal. I was like, Man, I would love to. But yeah, man, he's he's one of those guys. I don't smoke cigars, but if I was around Reed, Reed, I'd probably end up oh, smoking yeah. a cigar. He, well, I met Drew Colesveins and you go to his humidor and he's got packs like that have Reed's name on. He's like, these are for Reed when he comes in town. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's all. That's when you know you're an OG. That's that's yep. what it is. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit a uh, a few more of these ones up from the beginning because um, uh, this Camp Nelson A at the very beginning was fantastic. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna just go back to them just a little bit, but I do want to save a little bit because I know that uh, Uncle Shim wanted to, wanted to try some of these. So I want to. Ship a few of them back to him. So, yeah, but, Jim's a good dude. Yes, yes, Jim um, is the man. So, I think the uh, the moral of the story is now that we're about an hour into this, is that we're going to be taking five of the six barrels today, um, and I am not disappointed in that one bit. Oh yeah, no, these are all stellar. Very happy with more than happy with all of them. I, I see a question here, not to interrupt, but uh, someone's asking about rare breed single barrel picks. I just don't think that's going to happen because it's just a, a batch product. Um, you know, it's a six, eight, and 12 year product. That's that's the formula that's been going around since 91. So there's not really a single barrel rare breed. Um, I mean, I guess in theory, you could batch it and then dump it into a new charred barrel and call it a single barrel, but I just don't <laughs> see that being wild turkey's thing. Um, but Grab it while you can, because I'm I'm hurt. I'm hearing that rare breeds harder and harder to find in some places. Thanks for a I'm minute. I'm seeing <laughs> uh, I'm seeing Jordan and Sutan. They got bets on the line, and Jordan's like, "You sure there's not one more to eliminate?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly, I'm I'm happy with five. I, I think uh, I think five barrels is it's the perfect amount. Honestly, we were we were originally going to only do five. Then Shem said, "I'll sneak a six one in there for you," and I was like, "Perfect, we'll take." So, it. so which ones did you pick again? Because I'm, I'm in La La Land on this. So we got so two we, Camp Nelsons. Yep, both Camp Nelson. These are oddly enough, these are all fourth floor. Every single one of them. So, uh, but the first two are Camp Nelson A, fourth floor. We got barrels uh, twenty one, three three one, and three three eight, and they're both and, twelve, twelve, twelve. Yep, these are both uh, the rule, the magic. Uh, I was about to say roulette, uh, whatever slot machine. Yeah, twelve, twelve, twelve. Uh, we passed on four seven four. We thought it was a little uh, well bitter, meh, um, very, very uh, North Carolina ish. If if Ryan gets that, <laughs> yeah, that insight, so going to uh, North Carolina ABC coming soon. <laughs> Hey, I did have uh, one killer North Carolina ABC pick, I will say. But, um, you know, everybody lucks out, right? Heck yeah, yeah. kind of how it works. But Where in South uh, Carolina do you live, David? I'm in North Augusta, which is right across the river yeah, yeah. from Augusta, Georgia. So Okay, so like by Aiken, kind of? Yeah, yeah, right in between Augusta and Aiken. Okay, cool. In the middle. Yep. Very cool. I'll be coming, well, not through there, but I got a road trip planned this summer going to like Asheville, Greenville, is it Greenville? Yeah. Greenville to Charleston, back to like somewhere in South Carolina and coming back. Yeah. We're doing like a 10 day cool. thing. Cause I love the mountains and I love Charleston. And so we're going to do all that area. Yeah. Okay. So are you going through Aiken? What can? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just saying if you mentioned it, you know, there's a, there's I've a been place. to Aiken though. Cause it's right outside of Augusta. <laughs> yeah, Aiken, there's a, a, a place I like to eat there downtown called City Billiards. So if you go through there, go to City Billiards. City it's, Billiards, okay. Yep, yep. It's very unassuming, but they have a great uh, great hot dogs and hamburgers. Perfect. Love hot dogs. Uh, real quick to kind of go through these barrels, and then I want to get to the question here uh, with David here. So uh, we're skipping 474, uh, but we're going to take the rest of the Tyrone Fs. Uh, so four eight four five five zero and five six seven. So five barrels for Bourbon Pursuit coming to oh. you all. 
uh, within the next uh, nine to 12 <laughs> months <laughs> at the rate that they go. It, it's going to be a while till they come. So just, just uh, 2022 hold your horses. Yeah, yeah. Hold your horses on those ones. I'm ain't going to hurt them. No, no, not at all. Uh, but you know, there is a good question on here and I think it, it, it begs to, to be answered. And there is a lot of talk about like, you know, there's a lot of people that, that clamor over Russell's reserve, but there is Kentucky spirit out there, but it doesn't seem like it gets the same kind of love. It so doesn't, I'll, does it? No. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. So just, you know, example and in, in point is, is last year I had uh, several picks and, and one of them, I did one Kentucky spirit pick last year. And just for an example, for my Patreon, it made it all the way to the like floor level. Um, you know, the, the Russells gets gobbled up quickly. And then the, the, the Kentucky spirit just like went all the way down to like the, the base level. And it, it turned out that that Kentucky spirit, the ones that, you know, should have gotten multiples didn't. And then they were like, Oh man, I should have got another one, whatever, you know, by the time they, they get it. And, um, it's one of these things where it's kind of a sleeper. I think uh, the the main problem is price. So Kentucky Spirit is priced about the same as Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. Some places it's a little cheaper. Some places it's actually a little bit more expensive within a couple bucks. And people look at it and say, okay, one hundred one proof, chill filtered versus one hundred ten non chill filtered. Why would I want to buy the one hundred one? Well, I, I I've, I've thought about that and and. All I can tell you is tasting is believing. And, and sometimes you will get a Kentucky spirit and you'll be like, damn, this is great. You know, and, and I learned my lesson last year picking that Kentucky spirit that some barrels just taste better at 101 proof. I think another good example, it's another distillery, but I'm pretty sure Breaking Bourbon had a uh, an article or something about this where, you know, you had the old Forester at barrel proof versus the, the uh, non-barrel proof. And a lot of people preferred it. Not at barrel proof. I do. Um, I, I I like it at a hundred. There you go. I think, and I think uh, I think it's just too hot at barrel proof. It, it's sometimes the water sweetens the spicier notes. So uh, I found where like last year, for example, Rick House E had all these oddball Russell's Reserve barrels, and some of them were awesome, and some of them weren't so great. But they were really oddball, almost like bordering like dickel notes at some point. Um, and but the second you got them down to like 101, it, it kind of rounded out those edges and it sweetened things up and, and things that were a little bit funky became a little bit more like fruity or like in a, in a honey fruit kind of way and, and just real palatable and smooth. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. Stone smooth like I, 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 it, it really, it, 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 butter was a, a, a note, you know, it's kind of like they, it just kind of took it to another level. Uh, I've had some S uh, recently that that uh, just shine. Like I like the S as, as Russell's reserves, but I think they might be better at Kentucky Spirit because it just there's a lot of spice with the S barrels, and when you put it at 101 proof, it sweetens it just that little bit, you know, and it just makes it a, a new experience. So I'm just going to ask everybody out there just to kind of have an open mind when it comes to Kentucky Spirit because I think we're going to see this year as a year where Kentucky spirit is getting a little bit more credit uh, than it has in the past. And, and it, and it deserves it because, and our strange thing is too, you see a lot of folks paying premiums for one one eight year, because they still make the eight year one one for Japan and people will pay extra money to get the one one with the eight year age statement. Well, that's Kentucky spirit. I mean, over here, you, any Kentucky spirits at least eight years. So, I mean, it's not stated on there, but I can tell you for a fact, you know, Eddie doesn't put them out there as Kentucky spirit if they're not eight years. So, you know, why pay a premium when you can go down to your local and get a off the shelf Kentucky spirit for 55 or $65 or whatever. So anyway, um, I think this year we'll see a lot more Kentucky spirits getting, getting credit. And that's my prediction at least. The more, you know, from <laughs> I know. I'm so glad we had him on. Oh man. Otherwise we'd be fumbling around. <laughs> 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 well i mean honestly here, here's kind of like how things i know were kenny's going favorite though on these oh go ahead and press five five zero it is i wrote that i said oak bomb yeah you got me you know yep. me so well i do i know so that's but, that's uh, the that's the standout for 550 is the oak i, for, oh, I mean yeah. really in, in in a lot of these tyrone f's there there is a, a prominent oak note but so ryan uh, what's your favorite 550, i really i really enjoyed it 
Man, so I'm torn between uh, 338 and 567. They're both so different because I'm more, I like more fruity notes in my bourbon. Uh, if you couldn't tell from like United, I kind of like those bold, like mm-hmm. bright fruit notes. Yeah. Um, but 567 is just like, you know, I talk, that brown sugary dessert type bourbon that I just, I can't get away from it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I love that. Good. Okay. So y'all, y'all have differing favorite barrels and that's a cool thing. So that's a good thing for your community too. Yeah. It's, it's a cool thing for that. It's a cool thing to make sure that any product we come out with doesn't suck either. So it's not <laughs> right. like it's just like, good checks and balances. You know, narrow, yeah. <laughs> narrow minded and everything like that. So yeah, we, we definitely make sure that uh, it appeases to both of us. That's, that's for sure. Well, what you, you want in a single barrel is different. You know, you, what's the point in, in picking something? And I think that's probably why you excluded the one that you did is because it was probably just so standard turkey that, you you know, it, it not that it was bad. It was just it didn't represent a a unique single barrel like you wanted it to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you'll get 474 and you'll try it. I wasn't a fan of it. I, I think I remember. Here's the thing. I was actually very, very worried when we started going through here and like the first barrel from Tyrone F was that one we tried and I was like, Oh no, like the, the rest <laughs> of the warehouse. So these, are, these are all going to be terrible. Like, what are we going to do? Like we should have done all camp Nelson A's, but no, it was, it was just, it was just that one that just kind of seemed a little more off profile, more yeah. bitter. Um, it, like I said, more of like Oak water, but Ryan kind of hit the, after I went back to it a second time, uh, you definitely get the bitterness uh, on the, on the back of the palate. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, kind of put that one back in the pool for for anybody and what's else what's interesting through. too a lot of people don't realize is that those samples are pulled beforehand so i think if i recall some of the dates i saw on that spreadsheet were like september of last year so oh wow you know if some of those samples that you're tasting were pulled a few months back i mean you're, you're looking at Who more knows, maturation yeah. yeah going on here which i think is like i said it eight, if, if it were like a 12 year bourbon, I'd be like, what, well, you know, might, might gotta get, get concerned, but you know, eight year bourbon, I think it's only going to get a little bit better, you know? Sure. Hit yeah, that Mike. nine mark and we'll, we'll all be good. So, all right, well here, David, stay on here just a second. And we'll go ahead and kind of okay. close up the stream, but I do want to say thank you everybody that tuned in. I think we almost had like a 140 plus people at nice. one point kind of tuned wow. into this. So I want to say thank you so much for uh, everybody kind of, uh, you know, joining us with this. It was it was going to be the the easiest barrel selection ever because we didn't have to really choose. We could have just pushed away whatever we wanted, and we did. We pushed away one. So very excited that we're able to do this. Shout out once again to our partner, Keg and Bottle, out of San Diego for making this happen. And again, shout out to Ian and Tony Magliocco for making this happen as well. You would think it might be from Magliocco from uh, the old Michter's family, but I don't know. Uh, he works for Campari, so... Probably not a <laughs> inc- little insider thing here. I, it, it's really weird. It's really weird. It's not like, I don't think Magliocco is like a very common name, but I could be completely wrong. And maybe in Italy. I don't know. It <laughs> could be. It? It, it could be. I don't know. But anybody that that is curious about, you know, what we do about uh, all this sort of stuff, make sure you go and check us out. Bourbonpursuit.com. There's a link at the very top that says Barrel Club. So this is part of our private Barrel Club. So if you want to get your hands on any of these you got to be able to join and you can be like the other hundred people that are here in the chat uh, that are else helping support the podcast at the same exact time and get their hands on great bottles of whiskey and as jordan said hit the like and hit the subscribe and go leave us a review on itunes or apple podcasts or wherever you get the podcast as well because we're always thankful for anybody that gives us honest feedback we do try to make this bigger and better all the time and your feedback goes a long way in making that happen. But with that, um, Ryan, I think we get to take a break next week. I don't think we have a, a barrel selection next week lined up, or, or am I wrong? Man, what am I going to do? <laughs> I know, it was like, Damn. We've, been on, we've been on a roll. I think we've done a barrel selection every week since the beginning of the year. I'm going to Austin next week, so that's good. Perfect timing. There you go. So we're going we're gonna to be taking a, a week off from selecting barrels next week, but I do want to say thank you again for – for everybody that is supporting us and make sure you go and check us out patreon.com slash bourbon pursuit, or you go to bourbonpursuit.com and hit the private barrel club link. Uh, but I also want to give David one more chance to plug himself, his book, his Patreon as well. So go ahead. Oh, well, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to taste 
uh, some barrels, uh, hopefully in the next day or two. And, and, and I owe a great deal. Thanks to y'all for that. Um, but, uh, if I missed any questions in the chat, uh, you guys just, you know, shoot me a, an email, uh, go to my blog. There's a contact thing there, or you can DM me on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. I'll be happy to answer Cause you know, these things go by so fast. Um, the, uh, blog is rarebird101.com. Uh, you can check out all kinds of whiskey reviews, articles about different stuff. My Patreon is patreon.com slash rarebird101. And of course, if you want to get a copy of American Spirit, uh, which is the history of wild turkey, it's wildturkeybook.com. But thank you so much. And, and I enjoyed this. This was a hell of a lot of fun. And I hope to do it again with you guys. Heck well, yeah. fantastic. I feel like Maybe I just one spent day. a day with Eddie in the warehouse. That would be awesome. <laughs> Please, COVID, go away. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, we'll all get there. We'll get there soon. Yep. So, soon. all right. Well, cheers, everybody. Thank you. And we'll talk cheers. to you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, I forgot. New podcast tomorrow. Check it out. All right. <laughs> later.